real action and change can only happen out of passion. So what's your project called? What's The project is called Sibang Waste to Value. Welcome to Get Lost Education. It's a show where we invite change makers, green leaders, artists, activists who have created their own paths and affected positive change in their communities and our world. You know, in my own journey, it was only by getting lost so many times that I was able to discover myself, learn about the world around me, my own passions, and really to learn about the impact I wanted to have on this world. And that's why I'm here at Green School Bali a place where we're rethinking education, where we're reimagining what a school is and can be, and empowering the next generation of change makers. And today, we are meeting one such change maker, Heiko Sanders. Heiko is a high school student at Green School Bali, who together with the Green School community is trying to solve one of Bali's biggest problems, plastic trash. But this isn't your typical trash cleanup project. It has a twist. In fact, it's quite a fascinating twist. Let's find out how Heiko and company are planning to turn plastic trash into value. Welcome to Get Lost Education, Heiko. Thank you, Baxal. Yeah, it's awesome to have you here. It's amazing to be here. So let's start off, um, let's just tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from, how old are you, and what are you up to? Well, like you said, I'm Heiko. Uh, my last name is Sanders. I have been at the Green School now for four and a half years. I'm a senior student. I came here in the eighth grade uh, together with a quite um, a couple individuals in my grade and they've sticked around that entire time. We, we enjoyed the Green School so much that we stayed for multiple years longer than we expected. So you came in grade eight, yeah? I came in grade eight, and last your, year of middle school. And your family thought you were coming for a year? For a year, exactly. That's it. So what? Oh, hang on, let's stop a minute. So one year turns into, let me do the maths, five. Yeah. How did that happen? Well, a lot of things. We, um, we mostly just enjoyed the island and being in green school so much. I found my passion in surfing here. Mm. Um, my father had an amazing work uh, job here. Yeah. My mother really liked the peace here because she was not able to work anymore with her migraines. And um, my sister also enjoyed it here with her mm. friends. So it was mm. mostly just that we really liked it here. Um, but it's also not that we didn't like it in Holland where I lived before. Yeah. yeah. Uh, where did you grow up then? I grew up in Holland, so initially I yeah. lived in Amsterdam for five years, I was uh -huh. born in Amsterdam, and then I moved more to the countryside after when I was five, so more to the west of Amsterdam in a place called Harlem, yeah. and there I grew up in nature, I mean every, every day after school I'd be playing around in the garden, so that's why I found this connection with Bali quite quickly, because you're in nature, I mean, look, we're in the middle of the jungle. Yeah. What did you really love about your childhood? What can you remember? Tell us a little bit about that. Was it the nature when you moved away from the city? And well, looking back at it now, of course the appreciation for nature, but more the freedom. Was there a time, so fast forwarding into this decision, your family decision to come to Green School for a year and stay for five, which is a very common Green School I've, story. I see it around me in my grade. Yeah. yeah. You know, you've been here for five years, so you must have seen this, our school change here as well a fair bit. What do you see the direction of Green School has ch in terms of change across the years? Well, over the years, you very quickly learn to adapt. I adapted myself to the English language. I adapt adapted myself to an international community, kids from all over the world, but also local kids, 20% local st Indonesian students. Mm. And I learned to uh, connect them very quickly and adapt yeah. to all these situations. So I think I adapted quite quickly to the Green School changing too over the years. When I was at home for several months before uh, the summer vacation last year, almost all of my friends came to me and they said, well, I really wish I was at school being able to see my friends and be there with the teachers in person. So it's, that, and that's something I look back on and I, I fully agreed with. And I think a lot of teachers do as well and students. Yeah, I think the whole community yeah. got a little bit of Peter Tosh actually. Your Peter Tosh quote always wanted to say this in a podcast that you never miss your water till your well runs dry. That's it. And even now I read yesterday that there's like 800 million students still out of school around the, around the world. 
We're going to talk about your project soon. Um, but putting aside the project, what's, give us a sense of some, uh, you know, a fond memory or something that, you, that stands out for you as part of your Green School experience. Ooh. There are so many good memories. Um, first thing that comes up in my, he in my head is probably just being in the Jalan Jalan because I've done it for so long. I've been mm -hmm. part of the SOAP program for so long. So the SOAP program is a Student Ocean Ambassadors program? That's it. Yep. Should have introduced it, sorry. Yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an ocean connection program, basically. We, we go um, marine, uh, in, like marine uh, biology, like go out in the reefs, check them out, go surfing, which I mainly participated in. Mm. Uh, do all these different things but you do your surf life saving certificate exactly you get certified certified which, which is amazing surfers for diversity with disabled kids yeah. the final it, straw project it's mm -hmm. more than just a surf program and those it? certificates have gotten me a job outside when i go back to holland so it's really helped me out but uh coming back to your question the jalan jalan which i've been part of for almost four years now with pak francis pak edu yeah. um pak and paul as and well. jalan jalan in indonesian means sort of Getting out, walking, that sort of thing, learning outside. So our Jalan Jalan program here at Green School Bali is experiential program. It's learning exactly. by doing. So keep going. That's great. Yeah. So in this Jalan Jalan, we, we just went surfing every Wednesday. That's what it started with. And it was such a fun thing just because we actually got out of school. We went to the ocean. The thing that I started to love so much at that time, be with my friends, be with eventually some of my favorite teachers which I didn't know yet I was quite scared of them initially so you're learning the skill you're connecting with nature but now you're actually putting all of that learning and that love for nature and that love for the ocean into action exactly it's that's what it's all about action. and I think it's a really important green school story yeah and yeah. I think real action and change can only happen out of passion yeah all right put that one down so you're obviously passionate about a problem in Bali um, specifically plastic waste and, and uh, waste in general. Mm -hmm. and well, this, I, your project mm -hmm. is focused on that. I'd, there might, there'll be a lot of people and I'm one of them <laughs> sitting here that wants to learn a lot more about the, uh, your project and your Greenstone. And if you could, you know, fill us in and let's just have a conversation about that. Yeah, so the, the passion there in that particular project does not really lie in the plastic problem or something it, it initially lied in the ocean like I said mm. um, from there as a surfer and I think all the other surfers out there can relate to this in Bali when rainy season hits when the rain hits the river flows and the river brings along all its trash so that's just it was a passionate hate against the trash <laughs> that's what happened basically so that really led me to wanting to solve this problem and um, what I saw personally was a lot of these solutions out there like um yeah particular products like sungai watch with um jerry like you talk yeah. to them uh bye bye plastic bags yeah. um all these different things and they're they're amazing at collecting this waste they're every year you get the big cleanups at the beaches mm -hmm. the weekly cleanups everything um and i just started wondering in my head where does it go where does the plastic go to eventually does it end up back in the landfills does it go to the ocean does it get recycled like what happens exactly and uh, that's, I guess, where the interest really started lying and where I wanted to come in and try and change something. So what's your project called? What's the project is called Sibang Waste to Value. So it started with a love of the ocean and a connection with the ocean and a wanting to protect the ocean and make a difference. Run us through what the project actually is then. Yeah, um, so diving straight into it. The project is... Like I said, it's it's focused on creating that circle. It's it's creating that circle of from the start of the collection of the plastic on the beach or wherever, to a, a new or a product to be used. Mm. So what we are doing, we are um, our team is bringing a pyrolysis, a plastic pyrolysis machine to Bali, and this machine is capable of recycling plastic into its original state. And its original state being oil. We are mm. able to yep. make this uh, a viable recycling way, like a recycling business. So is this business. just an idea or is this yeah. happening? This is happening. This is happening right now. And it's not, like I said, it's not a research yeah. idea. It's not a go home and do an assignment and research plastic it is pyrolysis. A it's a real project. It's there's real, real money involved. There's, there's real, real plastic there's real involved. Machine. It's a real machine. You'll see it with your own eyes. And the location is just down the road at the Sibang Kaja TPST. Um, it's literally a two-minute drive down the road. That uh, hopefully that blows a lot of people's minds. Uh, hopefully they're really thinking, well, what's going on with this school if there's 
young change makers. It's just so much different to the average school experience or even it opportunity really for student impact. Fully. And there's there's so many good things about this project, like learning, like giving kids the opportunity to action take, like m using me as an example, I guess. Um, there's so many different aspects of learning. Our core values are education, sustainability and economy. So you talked just before, um, you're off to Lombok and that's where the machine is at the moment. Is no, right? the machine at the very moment is in Surabaya. Surabaya, yes. which is another part of Indonesia. Yeah, so it just arrived from the factory um, in China. And so we're waiting for some customs clearance. That customs sort of clearance thing. happened two days ago. And the machine is going to Lombok uh, for some testing, okay. some testing of the plastics, the diesel, yeah, just, yeah. just to make sure everything is working properly. So you're literally going to take plastic waste that's either collected by other organizations like Bye Bye Plastic Bag or Sungai Watch or collected and brought into our Kumbali Center or yeah. collected in other ways. You're actually going to take that and turn it into a fuel. Well, those, co those corporations that we could uh, partner with are kind of our second or third step even. The initial step where we will get our trash from is from the local TPST, which are, the machine is at. They are a, a TPST, uh, for the viewers that don't know, a TPST is a local collection center. This is a collection center where the plastic goes, or the mm -hmm. waste, mm -hmm. all the waste goes, mm -hmm. before it gets brought to a TPA, and the TPA is a big landfill, basically. Okay. So these collection centers, what they do, they get the trash from a local area, somewhere around 500 to 1,000 families. We've got around 750. Um, so all their trash will be taken from their homes, from their households, preferably separated, which is not happening in a lot of places, and will be brought to the machine and from there on turned back into oil. So what do you do with the oil then? The oil is distilled yes. and from there on um, the, we're turning it into diesel. So it can be used in diesel engines, it can be used in uh, cars like a Kijang or heavy trucks. It could be used yeah, in, in backup generator, stuff like that, and it will be sold to a distributor from there. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So like our biobus program, uh, which is taking another type of waste, which takes used cooking oil and turns that into biodiesel, now we're looking at solving another problem, waste in Bali, and providing another alternative energy source. We could easily supply that diesel to make those buses run because that diesel is fully usable for any diesel engine. Wow. So you're inspired, you're motivated, you're a change maker. What's been challenging? What's the biggest challenges you've faced in this? Um, so the biggest challenges of the project itself are probably the whole licensing thing. Um, we are in Indonesia after all, there's a lot of issues trying to get these licenses, government issues, stuff, this and that, political issues. So this project initially started with a student called Nick Kars. Okay. Nick yeah. Carson, sorry. Yeah. He yeah. Um, did a greenstone about plastic pyrolysis in 2019. Mm -hmm. So this project was already live then, up yeah. and running, trying yeah. to make this happen. Yeah. Um, it took it took in total 18 months to get a specific code to bring in the machine. So I can explain if you want me to a little bit about the code itself and how it works and how we had to yeah. just an exam a good example of how the regulations yeah, work. Yeah, give us an example. Okay, so basically this code is called a HS code, and any um, physical machine or whatever you want to bring into Indonesia needs this code. So no one has brought a pyrolysis machine into Indonesia before imported it. So we needed to get this code. We need to acquire it. And to get this code, you need to have the machine in Indonesia. And uh, because it needs to be inspected in Indonesia to acquire the code. But to bring it in, you need, need the, the code. code. <laughs> so that's just, that's just one oh, example of the many we've had. Sounds like a lot of bureaucratic... Uh, beautiful 18 months. <laughs> beautiful bureaucra bureaucracy. <laughs> yeah. I suppose you learn um, the opportunities for you to learn real learning real world learning, it's just exponential when you start going down a project idea like this and putting it into action. Yeah, I, I wasn't too much involved with the, with the actual getting the codes done here and there. Um, it, was just, it was just such a hassle. I, I saw all the team members just like, we started, the project kind of faded, it, it went into the background basically, just because it was taking so long and the motivation was going downhill. And luckily we scraped it all together and from there on, insanely good things started happening. It all, it all just, the project just like flowered. It, it came mm. out of nowhere. It just mm. sprung up again. It was amazing. So I'm hearing like problem solving skills, collaboration, communication, 
create, uh, thinking critically, understanding systems, systems thinking, uh, adapting, being resilient. Um, I think the learning journey of just of this project alone would surpass what a lot of students yeah. are experiencing. And for me personally, the whole project is such a crazy thing, and I'm just putting as much time as I can into it and trying to help everyone, uh, trying to help the whole team out with this project and trying to make it all happen, and the others are too. And for me, it's just everything's happening so fast and there's so much to take in that it's, it's definitely going to take some time past the Greenstone presentation to realize all these things you just labeled and see how they actually... Uh, gave me such opportunities and how I'm able to learn from them um, and take them with me for future learning experiences. Are you going to have enough? I mean, it sounds like you've got big dreams, and that's amazing. Is there enough plastic here? What's the what's the deal with the plastics here? Is it the plastic is not the big problem? There is a definitely enough plastics. Yeah. I think for everyone listening from Bali knows this. Um, unfortunately, yeah, yes. Unfortunately, but fortunately, once this machine is working. <laughs> So um, we've yeah the landfills are just packed. There's there's nine massive TPAs in Bali and they are just it's in it's shocking. It's you've actually been, shocking. You've been. I've been to one. I think I've been you took to a class in there too. I took my grade there and every uh, almost everyone there was actually just in disbelief how big it was. Can it, can you use the just the recyclable plastics or any plastics? So the amazing thing about this project, yeah. which is super going to turn this all around, which is why our tagline is starting a new era of waste management in Bali. Starting a new era in waste management in Bali. Yeah, because this machine can take in the non-recyclable yeah, plastics. Wow, that's huge. So th it is a really big thing. Um, so the recyclable plastics are already being dealt with quite properly, but it's such a small percentage. There's only two, three types of plastics that can be recycled, and there's seven in total. And the majority of the plastics are the non-recyclable ones. So I'd, I'm so impressed. I've almost done. I'm lucky there's some questions written down here. Um, it's still blowing my mind. It's just the, the scope of learning and the scope of the actual project um, that surpasses normal school projects by so many levels. What happens? Like you're young and you're free and you're going to graduate yeah. um, and you've started this project up, is it going to mean you stay in Bali for a little bit longer or are you setting up something that's sustainable that will run without you? There's a whole team. There's green school teacher Jesse Driver. Yeah. There is another green school student, IU, yes. a grade 11 student. And there is a, a couple green school parents involved and there is one outside company involved, which I can talk to in a little bit. But yeah, I, um, I've, I've been thinking, it's been on my mind if I want to stay longer or not. I, I'm thinking of taking six months off after green school before I start my foundation year in business. Um, and this, that time is either going to be traveling, seeing the planet, or um, exploring this more. This one yeah. What's it like working? Um, you know, I never had the opportunity as a grade 12 student to work in a change maker group of, yeah. with adults professionals motivated you know talking about you know you mentioned Jesse Driver yeah. um, I think I know a couple of the other parents that are yeah. involved yeah. they're really intelligent high they're functioning super intelligent. motivated all people they've all they've all got super and you're working with them yeah. in your school project yeah exactly they're super like um, super motivated like you said they all have their own ideas behind the project which is so nice because everyone's got a nice perspective to bring into this project we can basically there's a whole picking choosing thing where like oh my god that's like he's got some really good ideas about this he's got some good ideas about this so i might have some solutions for this and we're, it's all coming together in this project so it's really nice to work with everyone what do you think that group of awesome adults would be learning from you because i bet they are learning from you yeah they're they're um i think Mainly what I've got to bring to the table is uh, the, motiv the motivation probably to um, want to get out there and uh, really to be driven by something as surfing or mm. the ocean initially mm. and from mm. there on the plastic and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and also we need it. I use, us us yeah. people getting a bit older, <laughs> yeah. been fighting the fight for a while, we need that motivation. For yeah, you. exactly. Yeah. yeah, no, and it's it's I, I want to help them out as much as possible with that as well. And IU, the other green school student involved, she's super motivated. She's really um, in touch with the local community. Now, she, I used to um, set up Kambali. Yeah. Um, so recycling centers at Fantastic. other schools here. She's amazing. Isn't she? Yeah. Tell me a bit about the. You said there's three focus aspects of the project. Yeah. The, the the economic. Yeah. Now, I can see the economic how that sort of works out. Yeah. 
um, the environmental, I see the environmental impact. Yeah. And it'd be crazy not to be able to see the yeah. environmental impact. Uh, talk to me about the opportunities, not just in your learning experience, your education, but there are opportunities for education that your project will provide other people. Exactly, that's something we haven't touched on. Um, the educational part of it is really something that Jesse Driver is super involved with. He's really passionate, uh, IU too, and me and myself as well, and I think the whole team, of course. Um, what we are trying to do is get green school students involved, get local students involved through Cool Cool or just from local schools, and also get just people who are generally interested. Science is involved, like you said. We're gonna we can deliver samples of the oil, of the the plastic quality, what type of amount of biomass we have in there, because the plastic that's going into the machine is able to be dirty. Yeah, right. All it has to be is has to be separated by those categories, yeah. the seven categories. Yeah. It, it can there can be a slight amount of natural material, dirt, stuff like that. It can the machine can handle it. But also the business, so some insight that I and I are seeing. Yeah. Uh, for students on a on a classroom scale, how mm. this runs, mm -hmm. uh, what our daily problems are, what what the big problems are, how people can solve this basically, yeah. and yeah. also for the locals, uh, it's a main big educational part for plastic and the mindset behind it and how it can, it's it's the plastic itself is not the problem, it's the way we use it. Oh, the people. The pe the people. Okay, yeah. but the people are. It's not climate know. change. Yeah. It's people change. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. That's the real thing. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a good factor behind it. So you've got all those things and um, yeah, we want to involve locals as much as possible in this as well. So it can bring a real impact to Bali, but also the international community and green school and outsiders. Yeah, there's definitely a big aspect to it. I can see that just, we know that there's a problem. Yeah. And I think, every, I think it, everyone does. Everyone knows yeah. it. And your project is providing a solution to the problem, but in the, at the same time is providing a, better understanding of the problem and i think all problems should do that yeah yeah especially yeah. these plastic and like uh sustainable problems yeah. they're amazing so you've in my mind you've got awareness and you've got action in these type of projects that's how i categorize them simply and this project does both and all good products should do both they should have action involved and they should have aware awareness involved mm -hmm. you could do either as well uh it works but if you do both it makes the biggest impact yeah. 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 Well, awareness is the first step, but yeah. it sort of has only got a certain finite endpoint, doesn't it? Where you can just become more aware of something and then just leave it there. That's why the social medias are so important to me too. Yeah. Right. Because they are spreading that awareness to members who might not even know about this project before it's even up and running. Because it's not running yet. It will be running within the next month. Is there any other waste product from the pyrolysis? Yes. Okay, so we can get into that. The, yeah. the, the pyrolysis machine is, it's like a big cylinder basically where it goes into, that's how you got to manage it. It's slowly turning, um, it's melting the plastic over time and it does this just by heating it. Um, and it, but because the chamber is airtight, okay. it does not burn, so it melts. No, so right. there's no toxins that there's come There's no out. emission. Exactly, there's no yeah. bad emissions. Mm. Um, and therefore the plastic is turned back into oil it, it gasifies and then liquefies. Yeah. And the end products you're ended up with is the, the liquid, the oil, which is about 500 liters because we're putting in one ton, so two yeah. to one. Yeah. Then you've got a gas, and this gas is captured by the machine, and that is about, uh, let's say, 20 to 25%, so somewhere around there. And it, it can, it can, the machine can capture it and run itself on. Oh, so... It's, it's quite an independent system, this. Oh, wow. And then you've also got a waxy, charry like substance, which is a small percentage. It's a small part which you have at the bottom. This is mainly because of the natural materials that have gone in the chars. And um, we're, you're able to recycle that or upcycle it in bricks or asphalt. So it's, it's all able to not leave any toxins behind and therefore be sustainable. It seems like, uh, is, it, is it a new technology? No, because, I mean, the word pyrolysis means heating. Yeah, right. It means heating. Why has it taken so long? Why, why do we have to... Why we, no, no offence, no, no, why are we waiting course. for good, a good young change way to come out and, and solve this problem for No, us? good feedback, for sure. Um, the, I mean, you're awesome. <laughs> yeah. And I'm glad you're doing yeah. it. But why do we have to wait so long for this to happen? Exactly. So the, the pyrolysis technology... Uh, has been used on an industrial scale for quite a while. Yeah. It's been used mainly in rubber, tires, stuff okay. like that. Yeah. Um, but because of a new chemical um, invention or some sort of research that has yeah. been done yeah. behind it, they are able to uh, break down plastics now. And they're able to break down those non-recyclable plastics because of it, which is why it has such an impact. And this has only happened in the last five years or so. So it's basically 
reversing the process of where that oil was come from. Exactly. Anyway. Yeah, that's the simplest way to explain it. It's going back to the, its original state. And but one thing, mm. one thing that is important to mention, okay. because I know we're after oil in Just green one school. Thing. One thing is we're after oil in green school. So we've got those three values, right? Economy, sustainability, education. But for the sustainability part, eventually we'll have oil, we'll have diesel. And if you think about diesel by itself from the ground, you don't think about something good, right? Diesel, carbon's still in there. Um, plastic is an amazing carrier of carbon because it doesn't yes. release it, it's in, yes. in that form. But because we are turning into diesel, it turns to a liquid and you're able to release that by burning it in a car, mm -hmm. a bike, uh, an engine basically. I've got a really good, I think we've got a really good understanding of your motivation, the project itself, a lot of specifics, um, the learning journey yourself. Um, we definitely understand the problem and your solution to it. But can you help, it, help me out? Um, tell me a little bit about how Green School, the Green School learning program and even just the Green School community, which you've touched on a little bit, yeah. how that been a part of this for you? Well, the Green School community has been a part from the start. The, the team members are the Green School community. Um, it, the time to start this all off happened through Green School, having that time here. And um, I really think me knowing that I can turn a passion into a project, into action, came originally from the Green School. I, um, at the end of each block, we, are, we do a project, at least in one class, you know? So you're, that project action-taking system is in your head as a Green School student, and it's such a great thing to have and use. And um, that's kind of where I saw me taking action in this and how it felt so natural to me to go from me loving the ocean to plastic waste, to taking action so quickly. Mm. Were you a part of the LEAP program in high school? I was. It was, it so was you always... you did a bit of project-based learning there too. It was a slight dream of me to always be part of that. And I never found the right opportunity. I don't want to say I thought it was going to be a waste of time, but um, I, th I thought it was going to be something that was too free for me. And I... Um, I like the compounds of a class. Yeah. So, but luckily we have block three. <laughs> Thank block three. <laughs> the mini block. Three, three mm. week mini block. Mm. I, um, not this year, but the year previously, uh, the year before that, I was able to join Leap and took on something completely different, not even r closely related to the plastic problem. I built a parkour course up in the, the oh, yes. green camp, literally up, yeah. the, up yeah. the path. And it was, it was amazing. It was so fun to work with uh, Pacmo at the time and to see, this is also, I think, honestly, a good part of the action taking came from there too. But uh, looking back on it, it kind of it was like a good time to think about what I wanted to do because you're in that class time and you kind of mm. feel bad mm. having so much fun and not doing anything. So it was, it was something yeah. that drove me to get into action as well. Well, I love our students to be having fun. Yeah. We'd... No, but it's, it's a purposeful fun. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. And learning should be fun. Yeah, That's, it should be you know, fun. You don't just come to school and do your learning and then finish school and learning stops and then you go and live. It should definitely not be boring and yeah, It should definitely not be boring. It should definitely be authentic and related to the yeah. real world. And that's why I think I appreciate the green school so much because I, I went to such a, 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 a school that most other students and most other adults know. I went to a state school in, in well, not a state school. It's a, it's a school in Holland, like regular school. Yeah. It was a, a, a slightly Christian school, and I just remember French class. The the first year I was there was just such a horrific thing. It was just horrific to have to word learn all these words every week. Yeah, right. And words that you forget by the end the next yeah. week. And, and then like after French you, like class, you, you go to English class, you go to maths class, then you go to exactly. science class. Exactly. It's all just little we've, snippets of we've time. We've put learning in boxes, haven't exactly. we? Exactly. And like you said before, we it, haven't here. It, should be, it should be a real project that is useful now because that's a real way to learn. If it's something that is going to be for later, it might be something that your mind would just throw away in a second. It might just hit eject so it's a it's a no-brainer the answer is like it is definitely something really important for us at green school that yeah. we're learning for now we're not learning for the maybe later in your life and yeah. this project just speaks so loudly to that all of these skills and 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 normal other skills i, I bet your math skills and your spreadsheeting and your budgeting are, are, are elevated as well i bet you i mean your english communication i remember when you started Oh and yeah, as, that's one of the parts of adapting. Yeah, yeah just immersive language learning. It's a school for now. A school for now. A school for now with learning for now. And school for the projects now with just for speak now. so, the full so tag strongly line. to it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's quite amazing. Um, 
You feel like you're a change maker? Yes. I, I believe agree. everyone is. I agree. Uh, uh, do you think we all access that potential? Maybe not as much as you know. Okay, do you think Green School helps access the yes, potential for to sure. change? That's, change? that's the better way to put it. Green School helps access the potential of coming change. And everyone's got the potential. And to also, make a, change. a good, a good, because you are able to have fun. Well, it is fun, of course, but it's, um, you're able to see your passions, what drives you. And from that, become a change maker and see what your passion lies, how that can be solved, how, I don't know, whatever aspect of it is, whatever you believe is um, something you love and something you love to do and how you can make that better or you can help solve the problem oppositely to it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And that it seems like the planet has just suffered by putting kids in a boxed education system and said, learn this maybe for later and not yeah. being able to provide the opportunity to access that potential to yeah. change. Uh, green school is, is unique. It's not a thing that's everywhere. And by being in uh, such environment for myself, I've been able to take some of those things and adapt them to a place like this to a degree where it's very useful and very effective to be t used in that action taking project creating. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So I bet there's thousands of people watching this. <laughs> millions, millions of people millions, watching this. Millions, billions. And all these people right now are saying, you know, I want to get involved or I want to learn more or I want to help. How do they do that? Great question. If you, um, if you How are, do I yeah. learn more or get, or If you see help? opportunity for this project and you want to get involved, I, I highly recommend you to go over to either on one of our platforms but most importantly, where you can find most of the information is on our website, okay, www.sibangwastevalue.com. Sibang Waste to Value, and that's .com. We we can put that in here, can't we? Yeah. Yeah. So. And all all the other uh, social medias you can find through our name too, Sibang Waste to Value. One thing we're working on now is renovations of the TPST, which we talked about previously. You need a hand. And we need yeah we need a slight hand. Okay. We um we're doing a we're doing a fundraiser. Okay. That, the, those renovations are, um, we want to ready urgently. We have to have them ready before the machine gets here within the month. Yeah. And these renovations consist of building a new roof, um, re-cementing the floor because it's such a heavy machine, machine. We're doing some rewiring because it wasn't fully safe before. We are also preparing uh, a couple little uh, shacks which are in the back into usable visitor centers, classrooms for kids. So it's, it's all coming together. So you've together. got building project management Basically, expertise as yeah. well, the yeah. whole thing, <laughs> and then also a little, a little we have a little um, collection pond for the water for the cooling system. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so those renovations are needed to be done soon, and it would be a, uh, it'd be an amazing help for from all the viewers to help us out by giving whatever you can give, even if you want to reach out to give a hand in any other way, please reach out and um, yeah. Yeah, I think everyone should be able to see the the scope of the project, the worth of the project, the meaning behind it. Uh, you're learning the impact, yeah. immediate impact it could have. And if you're sitting in Bali right now or thinking about moving to Bali and you're not prompted to get involved in something like this, then I'd be very surprised. I'd be very <laughs> surprised if people are... Well, if, that, if that's the case, then please contact me too because I would love to know why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, contact him. Yeah. So let's... Um, I'd, I'd love to for you to be able to... I mean, you've... You're very awe-inspiring awe to me and you're motivating me. How, have you got a message for young, other young change makers and green leaders? What, what have you learned or how, what, could you, what would you like to say to them who are thinking about making a difference and making a change? Yeah, well, we talked about this through the entire podcast, basically. Find your passion. Find your passion. And then from that passion, find something you can do with it. And getting into action and you'll see one thing leads to another you can have big dreams of course too and one thing you just have to make sure you're working step by step if you're doing stuff like that you want to make sure you're not going for the big goal because that's going to confuse people if you're trying to change climate change people change you can't look at the whole thing you've got to do one thing do something small do something impactful that is coming out of your passion something you like because that's where that's what's going to keep you motivated with it it can't you can't be motivated if you're not motivated don't do it. Yeah. Don't do it. And that motivation does become intrinsically from that passion. Yeah. It's been a pleasure to talk about your passion. Thank you. Thank you, um, Marcel. And the scope of your project is quite amazing. So I'd like to thank you for coming. Um, I feel like I've not only learned a whole heap, but my 
motivation uh, battery has just been refueled. And, and thank you thank very much. That's yeah. serious. Thank yeah. you very much. Um, thank you it's, too. It's, it's an honor to, to sit here with such an amazing human. Um, <laughs> And not a not solely a product of Green School Bali, you know, um, but but definitely I can see that Green School Bali has played a role yeah. in in your learning journey and and who you've become and who you what the project that you're doing, and to think that you've got a project that's turning trash to value, yeah. um, and solving a massive problem for for everyone in Bali and 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 wider is just totally amazing. So thank you so much for coming in. Wow. That was awesome. Not only have I learned so much about a solution to a global problem, but my motivation levels are through the roof. In addition to getting to know such an amazing young change maker, I think it's important to note the Green School focus on educating change makers through real world learning experiences. And we've definitely seen that in practice today with Heiko. Heiko reminded me that everyone can be a change maker. That means you too. And it's about finding your passion, building awareness and taking action. So come on, be a change maker. Thanks for being a part of Get Lost Education. I'll see you next time. Bye.